Well, hello there, friends. Thanks for stopping by today. I'm really excited about today's video because it's a technique I haven't done for some time, but it creates a really cool effect that I'm hoping you'll like. There are many ways to do a faux stained glass look, but today is definitely my favorite. I have three examples for you, but keep in mind that you could do this technique with any dyes. You just need to create windows or openings where you can create that stained glass effect. So let's start with this example first. For today, I'm using Stick It Adhesive Sheets. This is a very thin, double-sided adhesive sheet that is great for die cutting. Since it's thin, you can put it on cardstock and the die will still cut through both layers. So I have some white cardstock pieces cut slightly bigger than the die that I'll be using. And next I'm cutting some Stick It Adhesive Sheet to be just about that size of the cardstock, maybe a hair smaller. You could instead cover the entire back of a cardstock sheet with the stick it and trim it all down, but I had these small pieces of cardstock I wanted to use. Now I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Hibiscus Frame Die. I used this in a video a couple days ago and I'll link to it here for some more ideas. So I have white cardstock here and I'm putting the stick it adhesive sheet onto the white cardstock. This is Nina 110 pound classic crest. This is a very heavy, high quality white cardstock, but you could use any white cardstock. Once you put the stick it on, you want to use a bone folder to really press it into place. So I did that with five pieces of white cardstock. I put the stick it adhesive on the back. Now I'm going to run this through my die cut machine with the hibiscus frame. I put the cutting edge of my die on the cardstock side so that the adhesive is facing down right now. Now I'm using the Gemini Junior here simply because it's a great die cut machine, but any die cut machine would work. The Gemini Junior is especially good at cutting intricate dies. Now I noticed that when I took my frame die cut off, all the little pieces were still in the die, so I thought I would save those. This is a piece of masking tape. You could use tape for this if you wanted to. I'm pressing it on to that die. And this will pick up all those little pieces and keep them in place so that if I wanted to do an inlay technique later, I could. So I'm just doing this to save those pieces for a future project. You could use masking tape for this or you could use a full sticky post-it note, but I couldn't find mine. And then you can reuse those masking sheets in the future. So I went ahead and did this for five pieces. So I die cut five pieces of white cardstock with the adhesive already on the back. Okay, so here I have a piece of white cardstock that is cut to the same size as our frame. No adhesive on that one. Now I'm going to take one of my frames, remove the release paper from the back. This exposes that adhesive. Now I'm going to press this onto the white cardstock. Now the thing with stick it adhesive that is really great is that you can kind of move it around after you put it in place. It really doesn't stick until you press it down which is a great feature. And then once you press it down, it sticks very nicely. So here I'm coming with a bone folder and pressing it into place to make sure it does stick. Now it's time to add some color to this. There are a few ways you could do this. You could inlay some colored cardstock pieces or have colored cardstock behind that frame. But I thought I would do some Copic coloring just to get some shading or some fun uh, dimension to this. So I'm just doing quick coloring inside of those uh, flower outlines. So you want to make sure that your marker gets into the nooks and crannies. It doesn't matter if you get marker on the white outline because we will cover it up. This will look like a hot mess as you're doing it, but that's okay. You could do any coloring that you wanted to here. I did Copic markers just so I could get some nice solid color down. But you could try anything you want, want to use. Again, you could even inlay colored cardstock pieces. I also want to mention there are many ways to do this technique, and I tried a bunch of them yesterday, and I found that this one really worked the best and gave the best results. But you can play around with the technique and figure out what works best for you. I do find this technique works great when there's lots of openings on a die cut like this one. However, if you don't have a die that has detail like this, you could take any die and repeatedly die cut it on a background and use this technique. So look through your stash and see what you have that might work. Okay, once I have my coloring done, it's time to take another one of the hibiscus frame with the stick it adhesive on the back 
and adhere that right on top. And look at that, it cleans it up, hides all of the messy coloring that I had on the outline piece. And you've got a beautiful look here. You could stop here, leave it as is, but I'm going to step this up significantly by doing the stained glass look. So now I'm going to add two more of these white frame die cuts. You don't need to add that many, but I find that if I have like four or five layers of the frame on here, it really helps with the stained glass look. Just be sure every time to press it down firmly. And again, if you don't have stick it adhesive, you could use liquid adhesive between the layers. Now next I have cut some white cardstock to the same size and I'm putting two white cardstock pieces on the back of this just to make it strong. You probably don't have to do this, but I just really want to make sure that this is a very strong piece that will hold up all that we're putting on it. Okay, now it's time to do the stained glass look. For this, I'm using tonic crystal glaze simply because it comes out of the bottle very easily and smooths out nicely. What I'm doing is putting a very heavy layer of this into all of the openings. I'm using my Tim Holtz craft pick to make sure that I spread it out so that the crystal glaze touches all of the edges of the opening and also goes into the little nooks and crannies. Make sure that the crystal glaze goes up to the edges, the walls of those little openings, because that helps to give that stained glass look when it dries. Now I do wipe my craft pick off onto a baby wipe over there so that it doesn't dry on it. If you do not have tonic crystal glaze, you can also use glossy accents or any other clear product. My two favorites are the tonic crystal glaze and the uh, glossy accents because they don't crack as they dry or at least I've never experienced them cracking. Okay, with our last hibiscus frame with the adhesive on the back, we're going to create the top layer or that stained glass like framed or outline look. I press Versamark ink on it, and now I'm adding silver embossing powder. You could use black, you could use dark gray or platinum, anything you want, but I decided to go with silver. Once I heat set the first layer, I let it cool, and then I pressed more Versamark ink on top and added another layer of silver embossing powder. The reason I did two layers is it creates a little bit more dimension and it smooths out and looks beautiful. If you wanted to save time, you could die cut like a silver cardstock for this, but I really like the kind of smooth, um, kind of bubbled up look that you get with the embossing powder. You could do three layers if you want, but two worked here. So I'm removing the release paper and putting it right on top. I did let my tonic crystal glaze dry for a few hours, so it was dry enough that I could add this without messing it up. But you definitely want it to dry overnight so that it really hardens in place and you get a gorgeous stained glass look. The hibiscus frame die also comes with that centerpiece that I die cut and covered with silver embossing powder also. I then used the Simon Says Stamp Big Friends die to create that layered die cut in the center. I used white cardstock for the shadow and black cardstock for the word friend. I added it onto a white square note card, and here you can see the final results as it's dried. You can see how the tonic crystal glaze kind of slopes up on the edges of the die cut, and it just gives a really cool stained glass effect. I think it'd be fun to make ornaments like this for the holidays. Okay, so I wanted to show you a second way to do a stained glass look. Now if you look at this die, it would take a long time to fill in all those little openings with a tonic crystal glaze or any other kind of clear product. So here is another way you can do it and it'll save you a lot of time and give a good stained glass look also. Okay, so this time I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock that's about four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm backing it with the stick it adhesive once again. You can save all these little pieces of stick it adhesive for other projects in the future. I keep an envelope with all the little pieces. Okay, so I pressed it in place with a bone folder. Now I'm removing the release paper and adding it to another piece of white cardstock of the same size. So basically, I have glued together two pieces of heavyweight white cardstock. So I have this double thick piece of white cardstock. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Deborah die. I use this in that other video. Again, be sure to check that out for more ideas. And I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. This time I thought I'd use the Big Shot Express just to show you this works with whatever machine you may have. And I did not use a shim on this. 
I really just want the die to cut through the top layer, but not the back layer. That's why I added that extra piece of cardstock back there. So basically, I just made an impression into this piece. That gives me kind of a guideline on where to add my color. So again, I'm going to just color this. You could use any markers you want or any kind of coloring. Copics was fast for me. And I don't have to worry about staying inside of the lines because we will cover those lines up. So I added different colors of uh, greens, teals, blues, and kind of some purples. And once I was done, I decided I wanted to cut out kind of that uh, focal point of this. You could leave it together if you wanted to and color the outside pieces, but I thought this would be fun. So I trimmed off the excess. This time, we're going to, instead of using tonic crystal glaze, we're going to use clear embossing powder. So I'm pressing Versamark ink over this whole colored piece and I'm going to add clear embossing powder. Now I found two layers was best for this, but you could do more layers if you want it to be thicker, but two really worked well. So after I heat set it, we can go ahead and let it cool, press another layer of Versamark ink and add the extra layer of clear embossing. Keep in mind that clear embossing usually makes your color underneath a little bit darker and more vibrant. So my colors are gonna really pop more. If I wanted to keep it softer, I could have used softer colors of Copic markers. There you can see that kind of jelly bean look that you get, and you get dimension on each of those pieces. Okay, so now I have another piece of white cardstock that I'm backing with the stick it adhesive. And then I will use that Deborah die once again after I press the adhesive into place. This time I'm putting the die onto this and running it through my die cut machine, but I'll use a shim this time. I like to use the memory box metal adapter plate. This plate is very helpful in making sure that your die cut machine cuts through the really intricate die cuts like this one. There we go, we have it cut, and I'm gonna pop out all those little pieces. Now, this time we're going to do the silver embossing. So this will create kind of the frame for our stained glass look. So on the cardstock side, I'm pressing my Versamark ink, adding my silver embossing powder and heat setting it. This time I decided to do three layers of the silver embossing. Not sure why I decided to, I really kind of wanted it to bubble up or give that rounded kind of puffy sticker look. So it really stood out on this card. On the last example, I stacked several die cuts together to make it kind of stand up more. This time I'm not. So by adding more silver embossing, it stood out more. So I'm removing the release paper from the back of this, and I'll put this right onto my clear emboss piece. And you can see how it lines up nicely and covers up our mess, and you immediately get a fun stained glass look. Now, I kind of changed plans along the way. I decided I wanted to keep the silver frame on, but I had cut it off of the colorful piece. So I decided to just go with it and I cut some really thin strips of white cardstock to adhere behind the frame just so that it had dimension behind it and it stood up nicely like that colorful piece. So once I finish that, I'm putting some strong liquid adhesive on the back of this. I really prefer the Gina K Connect glue. I feel like it's a great strong adhesive. And I'm adding this onto a white note card. So there are advantages to using the clear embossing for your stained glass look. One advantage is you don't have to wait for it to dry. The other advantage is you don't have to go into the little nooks and crannies individually. However, it doesn't give you that look that you get where it kind of slopes along the outlines of your frame that you can get with the tonic glaze or the clear product. So both are good options. It just depends on what your card is and how much time you have. So for the sentiment, I used the Simon Says Stamp Big Friends die. Then I also used a little sentiment from the Simon Says Stamp You and Me stamp set. Okay, my last example is like the first, but I added shimmer to it this time. I wanted to use the Simon Says Stamp Dazzling Circle die, and I thought I'd make a kind of a wreath out of it by teaming it up with two circle dies, one that's bigger and one that's smaller. I'm laying it down onto my work surface with the back of the die facing up, and then I'm putting tape on it to hold them together so that I can die cut the three dies multiple times in the exact same position. 
So I die cut four of those from white cardstock with the stick it adhesive already on the back. Here I have a large white circle and I'm placing the first die cut on top of it. Now it's time to add the color into the openings and I just decided to quickly add various colors of green Copic markers. Now once I was done with this, I wanted to add some shimmer to it. So I colored over all of my green coloring with a very thick layer of tonic aqua shimmer pen. This adds lots of shimmer and I was sure to kind of squeeze the pen as I did it to make sure lots of it came out so there was a heavy amount of shimmer. Once I let that dry, I'm putting on my next layer of frame, pressing that into place to make sure it stays. And then I added one more also. Next, I filled all of the little openings with the tonic crystal glaze, just as I did before. Here you can see what it looks like while it's still wet. I also did add a sentiment to the center, but ignore that because I changed my mind a little bit later. Okay, my last wreath die cut, I covered with three layers of silver embossing powder, and now I'm adding it on top of our wreath. So there you get that stained glass look. At this point, my tonic crystal glaze was dry, so I don't have to worry about messing it up. Okay, so I decided that I wanted to use a green note card instead of a white. So I decided I wanted a green center. So that's why I went ahead and die cut a circle and I'm just placing it on top because I didn't want to have to start over. I used the Simon Says Stamp Vacation Time stamp set. I really like the sentiments in this one, especially the wish you were here. I also like that there are a few smaller sentiments that fit nicely into small circle areas like this one. Okay, so in the finished card, if you look closely at the stained glass effect, you can see the shimmer in there. So you get this like shimmery glass look. And it didn't take long to add that bit of aqua shimmer pen to get that look. You could also use a fine glitter, but I found that this gave a much better glassy look. So there you have it, another way to do a faux stained glass technique. I hope you'll try this. It's really a fun way to create something extra special. If you are interested in the products, I always link them below in my YouTube description, but go to my blog. I have more photos, more information, giveaways, and such there, and you can find that by clicking up there on the top right. In the middle are a couple other videos, including another stained glass technique. I thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.